What is up guys and welcome back to another video here on the channel. This again is about the SP404 Mark II and in today's video I wanted to show you around the import and export area. Now I'm getting so many comments about this. One in particular is exporting beats, so how do you export your beats from this machine onto a computer. I'm going to start off by quickly showing you the import area because I think I have actually gone through this a couple of times now in various videos on the channel. It's really straightforward to use. If you're on 1.14 which is the latest software that's released this year, it's easy even better than it used to be basically. So make sure you're on the latest version of the software before you start messing around with this machine. If you're only just picking these up because of the delays, the first thing you wanna do is get that software updated. So yeah, there was a huge improvement to the area in this update. So previously, every time you imported a sound, it canceled out of the import area but now it actually stays in there so you can do multiple samples in one go if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you that quickly. You go to shift and import. Now, as I mentioned in my previous videos, the first time you do this after boot up is quite slow. There's a little delay, but after you've done it once, it just does it really quickly. I don't know why there's a little delay first time, but I don't think I've been in it yet since this boot up. So I'll just show you now. So when I click import from SD card with the value dial, you can see there's a little delay there. That doesn't happen if I go into that again, shift import, import from SD card, you can see it goes straight in. So I think it just needs to detect that the SD card's there and quickly read it. I don't really know, but the first time you do it, there is a delay. Uh, so I'm gonna go into sample, SP vids, and these are all my drum packs, which are actually available on spvids.com. So if you need some drums for your lo-fi or hip hop projects, go ahead and check those. They're an instant download and they support what I do here. So I'm gonna go into hip hop drums, volume one, hi-hats, and when you're in this area, you're basically using the value dial to skim through and confirm menus. You can see at the top of the screen here, that's how you get back a menu as well. You just keep clicking this, so hi-hats. And when you're scrolling through these, if you wanna hear the sounds, you can use subpad, which is super handy as well. So you can hear now when I press it, you can go through and hear those gritty hi-hats. All of these in this pack, by the way, have been chopped out of actual drum loops on record. So some of them sound proper gritty and uh, they've got a really nice texture to them, most of them. So let's do hi-hat six. I'm gonna put that on pad 11. And then it says here at the bottom, enter to confirm. So you press the value dial and you can see it does a quick dialogue on the screen and that's done. So now I wanna do another one. So I go up, let's do a snare and I'm gonna put my snare on pad 10. And 12 sounds good. So I'm gonna choose 10 and I'm gonna press enter. And let's just get a kick in there as well quickly. You kind of get the idea of how it works by now. Kick two sounds good. And then we can exit out of that and it sounds something like this. Now obviously I need to play around with the levels, etc., for those drums, but that's pretty much how the import area works. You can obviously do that with any sample. It doesn't need to be a drum sample specifically but that's how you go about importing a sample onto a pad. I would assume if you're importing long samples, that process is gonna take a little bit longer, but on the whole, especially with these one hit uh, drum samples, it seems really, really fast. So let's go back into the import area again. And as you can see, you can do export to SD card as well. So if we click that, you've got two options here, sample and project. I'll talk about project in a minute, but we'll go to sample first. So we'll hit sample. And then it says, please select the samples that you want to export, basically. So you click any of these samples that you want to export. So let's say I want to export those three, which I just did. You can see that they stop flashing and they become solid. And all you have to do is hit enter. And that was done very, very quick indeed. Now, if I go to my computer, I'll show you the file structure right now. You have to click through a few folders and eventually you will be able to find those files that you've exported. So I'll put a quick run through on the screen up now because I need to do that separately on my computer. Okay, now what's the deal with exporting beats? What's the deal with projects? now? There's gonna be probably a little bit of disappointment here. You can't directly export beats onto your computer to a point where you just can listen to it as a WAV file. Now you can do this on the NPCs. It's really, really handy. You can probably do it on other samplers as well. With this particular device, you cannot do that. The only purpose of exporting projects is to be able to take that project on an SD card to someone else that's got a Mark II and be able to fully play that pattern or whatever you've made on their SP404 Mark II. It's more of just a way of transferring 
projects from one device to another. It's not a way of exporting a whole beat so that you've got a WAV file ready to upload to SoundCloud. That's not how this device works, unfortunately. So getting into that, you can obviously import and export projects, which is a super handy feature. But when you look at that on your computer, it will probably, I think it has a .proj file extension or something like that. Basically something that's completely unusable to us as beat makers. It's just an SP file so that you can drop that onto another machine. So yeah, getting onto the topic of how do you export beats from this machine? Well, there's a few ways you can do this. I think I've actually gone through this with the SX before and it's a very similar process. There are a few advantages with this device in terms of pattern mode, um, but basically you've got two options. You're either a resampler or you're someone that makes patterns. So if you're resampling, that basically means you're getting a beat and resampling it down to a pad, let's say like this, for example. Okay, so I've resampled that down to pad four. And that would loop round and round for that part of the song. If I wanted a variation, I'd have to do it again and go. And obviously if I was doing this for real, I'd be spending more time doing it. But now we've got two parts with this particular beat. And what I could do is just record that out of my SP live so that it's sounding like a full beat. Or what you could do is get all the resample parts that you want and then resample onto one pad. So let's pretend that I want those two parts sampled down to pad 16. That's literally the only one I've got left. So I'll go resample again, 16, and I'll go. <laughs> Okay, so that's obviously rough. I would finish it properly if I was doing it for real. And then we can listen on pad 16. And then using the export feature, we could just export that one sample and that would actually be the full beat. So I hope that makes sense. That's how you resample beats and export them onto your machine. You would have all the different parts resample onto different pads. You can chain them together onto one pad and export that, or you could export all the individual parts and put them together in a door like Ableton or Logic or whichever is your preference. So that's one way of doing it. So with the pattern mode on this machine now, it makes it a little bit easier to get your beats exported. The main features that allow this to be a little bit easier are the fact that you can now chain patterns together. So if you made loads of patterns, you'd finished all your beats, you were happy, you just wanted to choose the order that they played in, you can chain them all together. And then what you can do is you could either record that out of your device live into your door through an audio interface like I probably would, or now because of the new features of this device, you can resample that down onto a pad. So you can chain all the patterns together in the order you want. You can go to resample, record. I won't go through the whole process of this because it's gonna take me too long. You'd resample and record that down to one pad and it'd play through the order that you've chosen and then you just export that one pad again. So that is pretty much it. That's how you resample a beat and export it. That's how you make a beat in pattern mode and export it. I will go through this in more detail individually in separate videos in the future probably. I'll build a whole beat and export it as well. But I hope that just clears up everything for you guys. I know it is quite um, a confusing area with the SP devices. You can make beats on them, but how the hell do you get them out? So they're the two main ways that the majority of SP beat makers are making beats and recording them out and being able to create full beats just on this device. So thanks for tuning in, guys. If you've got any more questions, please ask them below. Don't forget to support what I do by going to spvids.com. I think I already mentioned that earlier in the video, but I would very much appreciate your support with that as it keeps me doing what I'm doing here. Keep making beats and I will be back with more content about this device and other samplers very soon. Peace.